It was a totally unexpected turn of events when the first time we went to a picket. Prior to the first picket sign ever going up, we had conversed with our city council, the city fathers, the mayor, and so forth, because there is a park not far from here called Gage Park that is notorious. In this town and across this country, if you travel in the homosexual circles, for being a place where homosexuals meet and have sex. Out in this public park where you take children and so forth. It was a very public thing that everybody knew was going on. On the southwest corner of the Gage Park, men would gather in the daytime and go back into this uh, wooded area. And everybody knew what they were doing. This little area is the place where these homosexuals during the day, I'm talking lunch hour, you can go over there probably on this day and watch this activity where these men go in and out of that wooded area. And at night you go over there and it's like a whole com world of activity. At about 9.30, a procession of vehicles would begin circling the park. People familiar with Gage say they see the same cars night after night. A few of the drivers would stop and talk with each other. One man spent half an hour parked outside a restroom reading a newspaper by dome light. Many times drivers will rendezvous at the end of one of two out-of-the-way cul-de-sacs. On this Saturday night, these two men had more on their mind than just a friendly chat. One man performed oral sex on the other. We sent a man wired for sound out into the park undercover to talk with these late-night drivers. Uh, I'm going to look around for a while, okay? Later, this man stopped to talk again. This time, he wanted more. He offered our man oral sex. So what? Our city councilman at that time, Jim Reardon, I talked to him. He told me that he'd gone through there jogging and found mattresses back in the bushes and that um, he'd get them to take them out and they'd put them back in. We used to be quite active in running. They ride their bicycles through the park and run in the park. One of my sons, Timothy, came home one night and he was so upset because he'd been chased through the park by two homosexuals and he just ran and ran. <laughs> Several of our young men, including my son, had been accosted in broad daylight over here at Gage Park, it's just about half a mile away, being propositioned. And it just, it was getting worse and worse. And see, we naively thought, well, the city fathers, they just don't know. One day, my dad was out on a bicycle ride with my then five-year-old son, Joshua, and they went over to that park, and my dad would ride out ahead of him and then circle back. They were passing by that wooded area, and as he circled back, he realized that there was a guy coming out of that wooded area trying to lure Josh over into those bushes. And that was like the last straw, and my, or maybe the only straw it would have taken to get my dad to write a letter that was quite colorful to the city father saying, this should not be so. To the honorables, mayor, council members, the chief of police, city building, Topeka, Kansas, dear friends, call them friends. A malodorous sore with the scab off is open and running at the extreme southwest corner of Gage Park. At any hour of the day or night, a park official told me, male couples may be seen entering and exiting the area. He regularly passes along citizen complaints to his superiors in vain. My children, grandchildren, and I are offended and embarrassed as we bike and jog in the park. Why would this picnic table be located in a place like this. It's obviously not for family picnics. Gage Park is officially touted as a wholesome family place. Gage Park also appears on a nationally circulated clandestine list as a homosexual rendezvous point and safe house. My question, do you think Gage Park's running sore could be permanently fixed, Your Honor? Your consideration is appreciated sincerely, Fred W. Phelps. That was July 18, 1989. The list I referred to in the letter is the Damron address book that's edited and republished annually. There are tens of thousands of these places. They call them Cruisy, C-R-U-I-S-Y areas. And Gage Park was prominent on the list of places where homosexuals from all over the country can go and have uh, uh, anonymous sex uh, and not worry about police authorities. And he got a letter back and then from the mayor saying, you're right, and this isn't good, and it's been this way for a long time. And while I was park commissioner, 
I kind of cleaned it up, and now it's been allowed to return to this condition of things. Dear Fred, thanks for your colorful letter concerning Gage Park. We are well aware of the situation. We cleaned it up when I was park commissioner, but it was allowed to return over the last four years. We are in the process of putting together a program to bring the situation to a halt. Keep us posted. Sincerely, Harry Butch Falker, Mayor. July 21, 1989. And the mayor, who was Butch Falker then, and he was a good guy, he said he would do something, and he never did. And we just kept, you know, going down there, reminding him of the situation. I don't know how many times Fred Sr. went there to the city council and talked to them about it. We went to the city council and we tried to speak at the public speaking time. And the mayor ordered um, our pastor arrested for uh, using rather moderate language to describe the city's inaction. I think his reference was, uh, you've sat around like last year's Christmas tree, doing nothing about the problem. The mayor promptly ordered the chief of police to to remove him from, from the place. We tried heroically visits to the city council on Tuesday night, letters and phone calls to get them to enforce the law. Like the mayor said he was aware of and that he had a program and he was going to stop it. Didn't stop, it only got worse. And so we got some little dinky signs and it said things like, watch out for gays in the bushes. We weren't using uh, strong language. It's so funny to me to think back. Little dinky signs, they were fairly innocuous. We used the word gay back then. And I mean, you'd have thought that the world was coming to an end the way people... We lanced a huge boil without knowing it. We thought that if we just went over and would get a little uh, media attention, that that would wake the city uh, governing authorities up, the police department, and that they would uh, begin some kind of a moderate uh, effort. Uh, it wouldn't take much, we thought, to drive those openly promiscuous homosexuals out of Gage Park. Boy, were we wrong. You'd think that the, the sky had fallen, and they started editorializing against us in the strongest language possible in the newspaper. Uh, they, militant homosexual groups from Lawrence, would surround our pickets, literally uh, threatening our lives, and the police would uh, encourage it. No. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. So help me God, I'll kick the shit out of three of you. Yes. Let him go! Let him go! Let him go! And I'll kick you all that. No, it's fine. Motherfucker, I'll tell you what. Go ahead, partner. I'll fuck you up. Pressing up against people. Had signs that said stuff like, I hugged your kid today, and it felt good. Uh, uh. And other kinds of things that just left you going, oh my, you know, you'd cringe, literally.